The Small Business Show, episode 341 for Wednesday, August 18th, 2021. Ladies, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show where we spend a lot of time taking action by Small Business Ing. Sponsors for this episode include streak.com slash SBS to get 20% off your first year of their pro plan and bambi.com slash small to schedule your free HR audit. I'll tell you a little bit more about both of those things in a few minutes here. For now, here, back here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And out in uh, smoky California, I'm Shannon Jean. Yeah, man, you're... Uh, <laughs> Everything okay for you out there? Season. Yeah, so far. We have okay. one of our properties that's kind of in the line, but fingers crossed, we're going to do good. Uh, nobody's in harm's way, which is the okay. most important thing. That's good. So, well, that's good. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah, that's good. I'm excited about today's show. Anything with a, you know, when you came in and said, hey, let's talk about this accounting hidden secrets. I love that. Uh, and that's great. And we're going to talk about trademarks today, right? Yeah. And I have a business model I'm going to okay. share with you that I learned about, uh, on my okay. travels last week, but, uh, oh, but let's talk, let's talk about accounting hidden secrets. In fact, we had a few of you ask us, can you share some of your accounting hidden secrets with us? And the answer is no, but also, yes, you know, we're not accountants <laughs> here. Right. Uh, we'd probably make, I certainly would make a very bad accountant, uh, because I probably would take Same. more risks than I'm supposed to, but that's what yes. I love about having an accountant. So what we're about to share with you is, are th ideas that you need to run past your accountant, not ideas yes. that you need to run with. Are we clear yeah. on that? Folks? We, 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 make yeah, a we deal? talk about accounting often, <laughs> Yes, but we are not accountants. Mm -hmm. And so we've dealt with accounting and accountants our whole life. And a, a good accountant is certainly someone that should be on your board of advisors even yes. if you don't talk to them all the time, the, the, the more you build your business, the more you build your wealth, the more you need them. The more. Oh, you yeah, want to for sure. And closer in, in your. Uh, yeah. Uh, in your life. Yeah. So, so let's talk about these hidden secrets. Yeah. I, I mean, I think this is probably a pretty quick little little tour here, but there, there are things that you can do potentially that you can do that can really help offset income. And that's that's what yes. you're looking to do is. Um, certainly if you have expenses that the business needs, there are ways to time those so that they can be most beneficial. But when people talk about accounting hidden secrets, really what they're looking for is ways to offset income with expenses you already have. And so, yes. um, so th some of the things you can do, and I don't get to do all of these with all of my businesses. I'm sure you don't get to do all of them with all of yours too, but I know about them. Uh, one of them is putting your family members on the payroll. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Why hire someone else if your kid can sweep the floor or, you know, someone else? Uh, I mean, my kids and my wife actually, you know, have been on uh, payroll of multiple businesses forever. It's yeah. It's a huge, huge benefit. And it's a great learning experience for them as well. It is in a lot of different ways. They get to they get to learn about what you do. Then they get to participate in that in, in whatever way is appropriate. And and you get to keep literally keep the money in the family. I guess. Yes. And yeah. I, what we've always done is tried to, there's, there's some limits. And again, you can talk to your accountant, but yeah. uh, at, at one time it was like $5,500 a year. You could pay uh, a, a, one of your kids or each of your kids and, and put that in a Roth IRA. Yes. Uh, and so that money, if you, you know, putting it in there each year as a kid, grows tax-free. Now, it's not going to be like Peter Thiel and his $5 billion Roth IRA, but, you know, 30 years, 40 years from now, 50 years, it could be very significant. It's a lot of money. Yeah, it could, it could be a lot of money, and it's tax-free for your kids. Money. Yeah, tax absolutely. Tax-free when you, when you draw it down in the Roth IRA. Yeah. Uh, what I like, to, this whole over-encompassing thing about expenses and all this stuff is, I always tell people, it, it's living a before tax life mm -hmm. by leveraging your small business. And, and it's all legal. You, you like we've talked about on the show before each year, you should have a board meeting. Uh, maybe you invite your board of advisors, maybe your accountant or just the, the partners in your business. And that may just be your spouse and your kids. I don't know. Or, other people that are there, but you can certainly have that board meeting in Mexico. Yes, you can. In Chicago, in Europe, whatever is applicable to your business. And it, they, there really aren't 
it's not even applicable. It's as long as you're like, like you said, as long as an, enough, as long as you have a quorum there, yes. then the, the trip is expensable. And, and as I understand it again, check with your accountant, there's not a whole lot of limits to this. So right. and you get one a year. So, you know, yep. it, it, some people might look at you and think you're going on vacation, but you know, better you're going to your company's board meeting. Correct. That's right. And retreats you can take your employees on. You know, when you start, of course, you have to have the cash flow for this. Go yes. search, search uh, businessshow.co for the, the term cash flow so you can listen to those episodes about why cash is king. Uh, and if you have that cash flow, you get to make decisions about it. Do I pay more, you know, in taxes? Or maybe I could take all my employees and we could go on a retreat and do some team building things and yep. reward them. Right. Yes. Uh, absolutely. Lots of, other, yeah. lots absolutely. of ways to do it. The same absolutely. with, yeah, cars. Same with your, I mean, same we, with your cars. Right? I was just going to say, yeah. It, it, yeah. In many businesses, again, not all, uh, you can run a significant chunk of your vehicle expenses through the business. Uh, and you need to check with your accountant as to how, what that percentage is, how, what, or yes. perhaps the way to look at it is what percentage you need to take back as personal use of the vehicle. Uh, and, and your right. accountant can help you with that. But as long as, as long as you're, you know, following the rules and coloring in the lines, you can, again, live that before tax life. And that's, that's, that's right. a key. I've always said, you know, if you've turned your hobby into a business, that's where you really need to take a, a take stock of all of the things that you might think of as entertainment expenses, just because you enjoy what you do doesn't mean it's not a legitimate business. Right. I mean, look at me, I'm a, I'm a musician, Right. I earn money playing music uh, and I claim that money. And, but I also buy lots of instruments uh, because I'm a musician and it's an addiction. Well, most of those things that I buy are tax deductible. Again, yep. not, not my rules, you know, and again, I run it through the accountant, but that's, that's a thing. And, you know, I also got into the tech business. I buy a lot of tech stuff. You can bet that most of that stuff too is a business expense because it applies to the business. And so there you go. So talk to your yeah. accountant, but yeah. Yeah. Get yeah. some help. And because uh, if, you know, God bless people that want to be employees. Wonderful. We need all those folks, obviously to run our, our businesses, but people that get a paycheck, the 1040 crowd, um, never get a chance to have these benefits. So no. don't overlook them. Because you're going to be, you know, working so hard and you're taking the responsibility. You're taking all the risks. You're going to be up at night when the alarm goes off at your building in the middle of the night. Who goes? You. You. So, uh, yeah. you know, think about those things. How do I get rewarded other than just making, you know, more money, which is great as well. But uh, there's a lot of, of opportunity to enhance and enrich your life along the way by getting advice and, and learning about some of these accounting hidden secrets. I have a question for everybody. Uh, one of the things that you can do, and we'll do an episode on this coming up is use rewards based credit cards in your business to help fund some of your charmed life. And I'm curious what your favorite rewards based business card is folks. So please let us know feedback at business show.co if you would. Yeah, that's a, yeah, it's it's such a it, one of the keys to the kingdom are those affinity cards where you yeah. earn points and miles. Points, and or even have, even some of the cash back cards where you oh, can yeah, man. turn the cash yeah. back into gift cards and things course, like that. Of course, yep. Yeah, That's we're going to, yeah. I have a lot to say about that. And we've done a show a few years ago, yeah. but we need to revisit and uh, discuss that again. So you'll, you'll hear that in an upcoming episode of the small business show. Yeah. All right. So I had. I, I, I was in Nashville last week for uh, for a variety of reasons. One of the main ones was podcast movement, uh, a conference for the podcasting industry happened last week. A lot of people pulled out at the last minute with the, you know, with the, the Delta variant starting yep. to surge yeah. and all that stuff. I spoke at podcast movement. I did speak from Nashville, but I did not speak in a room at podcast movement. My two co-presenters, one of whom was the one who managed the the panel that I was on about privacy uh, did not make it. I was the only one of the three of us that made it to Nashville. And so I actually, I spoke, my, my session was Thursday. I spoke from my Airbnb on Monday and we pre-recorded it and then they, they 
you know, broadcast it uh, to, sure. the, to the thing. And, but it worked out. I actually got to go to the conference for one of the days and, and meet with some people, which was great. Uh, and it all worked out. But as I said, I stayed in an Airbnb. Uh, my wife and daughter also joined. And so it made a little more sense for us to stay downtown as opposed to where the conference was, which was out in Opryland. And we stayed at this building. I, I've stayed in many Airbnbs over the years, Shannon. And it's when you're in a condo, Oftentimes you get the message from the Airbnb host to just not mention Airbnb, right? Uh, it, yeah. it, it's constant. It, it, I've seen it so many times that I don't even think about it anymore. It, I just know not to mention that, you know, this is a short term rental. I'm staying. I, we're friends of, you know, Mike and, and Tina, whoever it is, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and it all works out and it's fine. This was very different. We rented a car, you know, what, what anyone would call a condo or an apartment, through p individual people who owned the condo, but the building that it was in called the Burnham in Nashville was built from the ground up to be very Airbnb friendly. So clearly somebody like me uh, went yeah. and stayed at a bunch of these places and saw this friction point and said, well, why don't we just flip it around? Why don't we make the entire building totally amenable to Airbnb? You can buy, you can buy a place here and live here if you want. And if you want to rent it out some of the time, that's cool. If you want to rent it out all the time, that's cool. Do whatever you like. And it was great. They used this system called Latch, which uses the Bluetooth in your phone to unlock all the doors. And your host can give you access to specific doors at specific times. And it just, nice. it, yeah. yeah, they had a concierge there to help you deal with like your luggage if it wasn't check in time yet. And uh, and of course, this building was in a great location right near downtown. But that that sort of goes without saying, you know, you got to have a good location. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Sure. One day coming back through the lobby, though, I found a flyer in the lobby geared or aimed towards people who lived, who owned these units, right, who lived there. And it was trying to convince them, hey, you know, you should be hosting on Airbnb. And so I grabbed it because it was unique to me. I've never seen anything like this. And it lists all the benefits and like, look, you know, we take care of the building. We do all of this stuff. And they say that, uh, you know, their their pitch was. In 2019, the Burnham had over $5 million in booking value for residents, and uh, on average, residents who hosted in 2019 at the Burnham offset one-third of their rent by hosting one long weekend per month. I'm like, okay, well, that's interesting. Makes sense. Yeah. Yep. And then I looked at the part about property commissions. The Burnham charges 25% commission on bookings. This allows management to administer the program, reviewing the listings, ensuring the rules make it into the listings, sharing guest feedback with the hosts. You know, all the things that Airbnb already does for you. <laughs> they probably manage it. It sounds like a full service type management place. And I can tell you that's Kind pretty, pretty common. Is that, that pretty that, common? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you give up like... If if you want to manage it yourself and do Airbnb and VRBO and all that kind of stuff, you you get the lion's share of the uh, uh, you know the revenue. Yeah. But there's a significant amount of management involved in that. If you can certainly, I don't up, think this is they aren't doing oh. any management. No, this is this is basically them saying we've built an Airbnb friendly building and we're going to get twenty wow. five percent of any Airbnb you do, because these people wow. were managing it on their own. Like it, it, the building yeah. was not in charge. I was talking there to was no agency with, type no, person. No. Yeah. And I've dealt with that before. I mean, there's plenty yeah. of, of like middleman businesses out there that will manage your Airbnb for you. Right. Those and, you know, deal with the cleaning and coordinating all that. That yeah. no. Yeah. This was just we've built this place and we're going to take 25 percent when you Airbnb it, which I thought, hey. Yeah, I mean, fascinating. It, yeah. it's it's a rarity right now. I think there will be more places like this in the future. But um, but it was yeah. really interesting from a guest standpoint. It was wonderful because we never had to, like, sneak around. It was all very out in the open. It, it was you know, we were there as Airbnb guests and uh, and, it was a, and it was a great place. Like it was a really great place. So, yeah, I could say that that have I have a lot of experience in these in vacation rentals and mm. different things. And there's certainly a lot of, uh, well, there's a significant pushback in communities that have not managed these types yes. of, of rentals well, and the locals are feeling impacted and different things. So it, it could be a solution to that type of thing where uh, to get the building permits and let those things happen, they say, okay, you guys have to do this. Or, you have to you do know, it. And, yeah. yeah. You got to pony up. 
Yeah. Yes, and yes. no, it makes sense. They they have solved a problem and they are earning a pretty penny for having done so. And yeah, you know, that's I mean, that's fine. It's more power to them, man, I, if it works. Yeah. Our hosts, we stayed in their they they just bought the unit that we stayed in. I think it they had had it for maybe a month uh before we stayed there. And it was their second unit in the building. So clearly they had a good experience yeah. with the first unit and you know, decided to take some of their money, reinvest it in their business of renting of these course. out. Yeah. So yeah. I can tell you from experience that if you get in a vacation friendly or vacation rental friendly area, yeah, it, it's a tremendous investment. Uh, but like we talk about uh, enriching our lives, li living a charmed life, we buy vacation rentals in areas that we want to go to. Right. Because that on top of, because it's a ton of work if you manage it yourself. Of course. It's a business in itself. And and uh, my wife, Renee, runs those businesses. And we have a separate LLC for each unit. We could do a whole show on this. Yeah. Uh, and it they are small businesses in and of themselves. And they can generate revenue like a, a significant revenue like a, a small business. Yeah. And, um, but they have their own set of pitfalls and, you know, of course, like any business does yeah. like any business, no problems, no business, right? That's, isn't that That's true? We say. Ah. If there are no problems. There's no opportunity. I want to talk about our, to sponsors because they can solve some of your problems for you. If that's okay with you, Shannon. Yeah. Sounds great, man. All right. Look, as business owners and founders, we know what it's like to run our entire businesses from our inbox, right? Between the sales, the recruiting, the fundraising emails, things can get super messy, super fast. Well, our sponsor streak is a CRM designed to help you stay on top of each part of your process and your inbox without ever leaving Gmail. Streak gives us tools for email tracking, mail merges, and snippets to save us time and scale up our email efficiently. And in just a few minutes, you can also set up pipelines right inside your inbox that let you start tracking your contacts and emails all the way through each process. Streak helps you collaborate too by sharing emails and pipelines with all your team members. So whether you work in an office, out in the field or remote, it doesn't matter. And your pipelines are completely customizable so you can track processes and details specific to your business. You can access your pipelines on desktop or in their mobile app to add and share information in meetings, at job sites, or however you work on the go. And here's the great part. You can sign up for Streak today at streak.com slash SBS and get 20% off your first year of their pro plan, their most popular option. That's streak.com slash SBS for 20% off their pro plan. Streak.com slash SBS. You got to check this out. It's really cool what they've done. You got, you just got to see it. Trust me on this. Streak.com slash SBS are thanks to Streak for sponsoring this episode. Look. When running our businesses, HR issues can kill us. Things like wrongful termination suits, minimum wage requirements, labor regulations. These are crazy things to have to deal with. And yet they are right around the corner for many of us. And an HR manager, those salaries don't come cheap. It averages 70 grand a year. Well, our sponsor, Bambi, spelled B-A-M-B-E-E, -E, was created specifically for us small businesses. You can get a dedicated HR manager, craft your HR policy, maintain all your compliance, all for just 99 bucks a month. It's true. With Bambi, you can change HR from your biggest liability to your biggest strength. Your dedicated HR manager is available by phone, email, or real-time chat. And from onboarding to terminations, they customize your policies to fit your business. And they help you manage your employees day-to-day something we can all use some help with all just for 99 bucks a month. It's month to month. No hidden fees. Cancel anytime. Listen, if you're like me, you didn't start your business because you wanted to spend your time on HR compliance, right? So let's let Bambi help get your free HR audit today. That's right. Go to Bambi.com slash small S M A L L right now to schedule your free HR audit. That's Bambi.com slash small spelled Bam to the B E E dot com slash small. Our thanks to Bambi for doing what they do and for sponsoring this episode. All right, Shannon, tell me about trademarks, will you please? <laughs> <laughs> I have a love-hate relationship with trademarks. <laughs> I love it when they protect me. Uh, sometimes they can be a pain to uh, keep, you know, enforce. Uh, but they, they, 
there's a many, many reasons that you should be, ha- you know, thinking about trademarks for your business, especially if you're just getting started. You know, they, they help protect your brand identity, right? You don't want some other company rolling out a similar name or similar logo. Um, you know, you can trademark, like I said, logos, names, symbols, sounds, and even colors that are associated with your business. And huh, it helps you. Yeah. And, and one of the big things that, you know, we talk about story here all the time, right? Creating your story, you know, this kind of thing. It, you know, you keeps you in control of your story when you control your trademark, your sound, your symbols, colors, all those kinds of things. You know, the, the color orange on the Reese's peanut butter cup. Well, you can't make a piece of candy with like that and use that color orange because that's trademark to their specific brand. Um, and the other thing that's important, obviously, it, it, well, maybe it's not obvious, but it's an asset. And as you're building your business up, all this intellectual property, your trademarks, any patents, like we talked to uh, Eric Benavides from Backyard Workroom, his patents yeah. that he's got, you know, it, and also, you know, it can also be a service mark that's related to a type of service that is unique to your company. What would uh, be an example of a service mark? It could be like when we had our, we, we were marketing and promoting an overnight laptop repair service where okay. we were the only company in the country that had boxes in DHL vans everywhere. And it, you, you would call us by 2 p.m. Yep. We'd pick up your laptop, bring it in overnight, repair it in 24 hours and overnight it back to you. That's a service. And we had that service mark Got for it. that type, that type of service because we, we promoted this overnight repair concept and how it works so much we wanted to have it protected. You wanted to protect. Okay. So it's, it's, you came up with a name for this service that was different and the process and, and the process, right? And it's, di- yep. Oh, I see. So the it was, process. The, it was the process that you trademarked, not, yes. Oh, we, interesting. we got the service mark on the process. We trademark, well, we, we had our, our company name, trademark, our logo trademarked, you know, this kind of thing. Right. Um, but you can also get that service mark. And one of the questions that we've had, uh, you know, readers that, uh, you know, send in and boy, his name is, escapes me at the, at the moment is when should I get a trademark? When should I start thinking about mm. it? Uh, and I would say it, you need to, you, you're going to miss an opportunity if you don't start thinking about it from day one or even before day one, because when you're, you know, stewing around with this idea in your head and names and logos, well, you can quickly go search the uh, U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, their database, to see if anyone else has trademarked that name or a similar logo or a similar service. And it's a huge advantage when you're, when you're building your big list. Like, let's say you build 50, you know, a list of 50 different names you're thinking of. Well, you can check those off if somebody already has that trademark, right? Right. Especially if it's related to an industry that you're in. Interesting. Huh. Yeah. And it's free. Yeah. It doesn't take very long. And some of them are kind of broad and it can take some time, but it is worth it. We'll we'll put the uh, link right in the show notes of where you can start today, even before you start your company. Uh, It costs nothing to do your research and it can help you avoid a future conflict and a lot of money if you go trying to, you know, uh, defend it or go after somebody else. So definitely want to want to do that. The other thing why it's good to start early is it's, it's inexpensive. You know, even if you have a company like legal zoom or rocket lawyer kind of walk you through it, they're doing, they call it do it yourself, but they kind of hold your hand through the whole process. It's only 250 bucks. Oh, uh, it, wow. some sites, some sites even do it for less. You know, you see them, um, you can totally do it yourself too. You can apply, uh, and we'll put the, the link right in the show notes here at business Um, you can do it yourself directly with the U S patent and trademark office. You know, it's, it's obviously takes more work, more time, but it's up to you, whatever you, you're going to. Did you use you know, an attorney when you, it. when you did your first one or did you do it yourself? We used a service like LegalZoom. Like LegalZoom. The, oh, okay. The yeah. All right. Because, yeah. I, I mean, you, you can kind of walk through the paperwork. Now, there, there are ways that are, if, if certain things come up where you're going to need some other advice. And certainly once you get a trademark, one of the things where I said I have this love-hate relationship with them is you have to defend them. And one of the things I hate to see is huge corporations going after small companies that have a name that's similar or, or you know, a, an image in their logo that might be similar. And you think, 
you know, these guys are the worst. They're big bullies. They're worth billions of dollars and they're going after, you know, Bob and, you know, Janet's uh, Apple cart or whatever you want to sure. call it. And, yeah, yeah. But if, you, if you've done this before, they're, they're required to go after these people using similar marks or images because if they don't defend their trademark, it gets weaker and weaker. That's right. Right? It gets diluted. It's like... uh you know, remember whenever you used to make photocopies, you'd say Xerox it or or get a Kleenex for tissue. Yeah, or or FedEx know, this if I'm going to overnight you something. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, you know, these big companies or, or you, if, you know, once you get your trademark, y- you have to defend it. Uh, and again, you can do it yourself, but, uh, you know, you can start with, you know, a, uh, uh, a cease and desist letter. We used to keep one just, I, I would just print them out and I would just mail it out. Hey, we saw this on that, especially with as the internet and social media really started to grow. Well, you would find these companies that had the same name that, that you did. Maybe they're in a different area or they just start as a local company and they grow a little, you know, a little bit. Sure. Well, eventually you, you have to reach out to those people and say, Hey, uh, I own this trademark. You are infringing on the mark. You must cease and desist or, you know, we'll have to take further legal action. Right. Well, in my experience, people are usually pretty cool. And, you know, uh, we would try to make this letter. If you've listened to me at all on this show, you know, I can't stand legal stuff and I don't like lawyers. <laughs> I don't like long terms and conditions. So my letter was just like, hey, man, I'm, you know, I'm sorry. You know, uh, respect what you're doing, yada, yada, yada. However, I have to protect this mark and here's why it's similar and you need to, you know, uh, confirm you got this and you need to change this. And if they don't do it, then you, you just, in my experience, you have to get a lawyer involved because it's too much headache for you to deal with. Sure. Um, and they'll ramp things up. They'll send a more legal, you know, uh, letter that's not quite as pleasant. Um, so backing up a little bit on the challenge part is you, you want to make your trademark as strong as possible. And what I mean by that is the more unique and different it is, the easier it's going to be to defend. Weak, weak trademarks are always going to be more expensive because you're going to have to challenge people or you're going to get challenged yeah. all the time. And they don't offer the same kind of protection. So uh, I'll put a link in the notes here. The, the Patent and Trade Office has you know some great examples of weak versus strong trademarks and how to guide you to... Uh, to that, uh, to getting a strong trademark. So that might be something where if you get into that realm and you feel still like you're not sure where you're going, having a trademark attorney or someone that can sort of coach you even a little bit might wind up paying off down the road. I think so. Yeah. And even if you're sending off those cease and desist letters on your, on your own, if you just trying to save money, you yeah. should CC your attorney. That you should send a copy of the letter or the email yes. to your attorney. So they're in the loop when you have to call them a month later or two months later and nothing's happened. They can go, oh, yeah, I, I see that I you got did it. this. Yep. So they so they can reference that original letter. Look, we, you know, uh, we, we've sent you this letter. You didn't do anything. This is the next step. My, my uh, attorney always used to tell me CCs are free. Do them as much uh, as you want. I like that. Uh, yeah. I, I liked it, good. too. I used it quite yeah. a bit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and like I said earlier, if you don't defend your trademark, you will eventually lose it because right. it, it, you're just going to get nibbled at. It gets weaker and weaker, and then it's harder to defend. If you have to go to court, somebody's they're going to say, "Well, look, you you didn't do anything to defend all this," and whoever you're challenging is going to do their due diligence and say, "Look, everybody uses this thing." Everybody right. wraps their candy candy in orange wrapper now. It's not just Reese's peanut butter cups. That's right. Everyone says this, right? So that that's what will happen if you don't defend it. Yeah. So fascinating. Uh, yeah, one of the things it, I found over it, as the growth of social media, it it became easier to find people infringing on your trademark. It's also become easier, in my experience, to get those people taken off of trademark viol- or off of those platforms for trademark violations or service mark violations. Yes. And I'll, I'll put the link in the show notes for Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. They have a form. All you have to do is show them that you own that trademark. There's not a lot of back and forth. If you have the documentation, they will yank that other person. And I've done it globally. You know, I had companies in Greece 
that were using our name, probably great people, right? Just sure. maybe had no idea, but if they don't know, was, yeah, right. They don't know. Tried to reach out to them. They didn't respond. I just went on, on all these platforms and boom, they were, it was, it was done. Um, so, you know, again, and on the flip side, your chances of you being challenged are, are pretty high, uh, especially in the first five years, because there's some like leeway and I don't know the legal terminology for it, but the first five years are kind of the critical time of that trademark. If you get past that first five years, it becomes more difficult for companies to challenge. And perhaps it's just the fact of, Hey, you had five years, you didn't do anything. Yeah. What? Yeah. Where were you? Right. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And then a couple of last little things. If you've registered your trademark, then you get to use that little R with the circle, right? That it's a registered, registered trademark. But if you haven't registered yet, you just started your company, you can use the little TM or the SM for service mark symbol that shows your intention to register. You don't have to do anything, but you can put it right next to where, whatever you're going to, whether it's your name, your logo, all that stuff. You can put that TM or SM symbol there. Um, and it actually is very helpful if you've been doing that for some time because you have to show that you've been using this mark uh, when you apply and it, it's just helpful to have that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. interesting. Okay. So you can like, if you intend to apply, you could start using that now as, as I'm understanding Today. it without, you can use it right without, away. without having done that, that could be your first step in, in theory. It, you do not have to show that you've applied. It, it's right up there when there's a, a basic facts PDF that I've linked uh, in the show notes and when you go there and read about it, they'll tell you, here's the marks you can use and here are the requirements. And it specifically states you can use the TM or the SM without having applied yet if it is just your intention to eventually apply. Amazing. Yeah. So you wow. can start using it right away. It doesn't yeah. matter. There's no, there's, they don't talk about time window or anything. Right. Um, so it's, I think it's a great opportunity. I think it's something that we should all do. It does add value to your business. It does add credibility, I believe. Um, you know, research first when you're coming up with a name for your company or a new brand or new business idea, a new product that you're going to roll out, do that research. It doesn't cost you anything. File as soon as you can. You can do it yourself. There's a, uh, I'll put a link to, everybody knows what Nolo Press is. It's like a self-service legal organization. They have a bunch of, uh, documentation on how to do it yourself. We'll put a link in the show notes like that. And once you have it, you you have to defend it. There's some expense involved and you have to challenge when you're made aware of anyone else using it. So there's some expense involved, but I think it's, it's, it can be very minimal. That's awesome. That's great. Very cool. Tell thank you for pulling all this together. Thank you for telling us about this. And also thanks for pulling all these links together and everything. We'll have them in the show notes at businessshow.co. If you have any questions Email us, feedback at businessshow.co. That's what we want to know. And remember, we want to know what your favorite rewards-based credit card is that you're using for your business too. So, you know, let us know that. Feedback at businessshow.co. Yeah. Hey, we have a, um, (laughs) something happened, Shannon, with our our previous uh, voicemail slash text number. If you Ah. call the old one, it will answer and you'll hear me inviting you to leave us a message. I have no idea what is happening with those messages right now. <laughs> I don't have any way of getting them and I don't think you do either. So no. we have a new one, but what I really like is that we've got something that I think is pretty memorable. You have to remember that you have to remember we're the small business show and you have to remember the numbers five, six, seven, and here's how it goes. It's five, six SB show seven, seven. That's five, six SB show seven, seven pretty good right and yeah, you can you could also be five six seven two seven four six nine seven seven maybe but trademark that maybe maybe we should see there you go <laughs> yeah. five six sp show seven seven you can text us there you can call us there we will get your messages we can reply to you it's another way uh of getting in touch with us if you if you want to head down that path so yeah good that's great yeah i'd love to hear your trademark stories what did i get wrong uh what did i miss feedback at businessshow.co we would love to hear from you yeah, thanks so much for uh, thanks for, so much for hanging out with us. Thanks so much for I don't know everything. We love that you listen to us. We love that you tell us what you like, tell us what you don't like. It really all works out. 
Do you have anything else to share, Shannon, before we... Uh, Go check out our sponsors. Make sure you visit Bambi, B-A-M-B-E-E, slash, is it small? It's Bambi.com slash small. That's right. Yeah, that's the weird one, because it's it's slash small. Yeah. Streak is streak.com slash SBS. So, yes, you've got that right, man. So Yeah, that's that, good. The Bambi one I love, the ni- you know, 99 bucks a month for HR services, it'll be the best money you've ever spent in your life. I yeah. guarantee it. Yeah. I, I was going to say, think of it as an insurance policy, which it sort of is, but it's so like much it. more than that. So, yeah, it's good. Thanks for hanging out with us, folks. We look forward to hanging out with you again next week. And uh, make sure you keep living that charmed life, huh? Yeah.